Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless. Hope another day is going good and everything's going well with you. I was going to talk about a verse that me and my brother Lewis were talking about in a video that we're doing that will be uploaded on his channel shortly. I'll put the link in the description of this video so you can go check it out. We're doing some sovereignty of God and predestination teachings over there on his channel. The verse that I'm referencing is when Jesus says, the spirit whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. So this is another inability verse where Jesus speaks of the inability of the world to be able to receive the spirit because it neither sees him nor knows him. The spirit whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. So the question becomes, how does a person become to know him so that they can receive the spirit? Since they have the inability to receive the Spirit because they neither see Him nor know Him, how do they come to know Him that they receive the Spirit? Jesus says, Nobody knows the Father except the Son, and nobody knows the Son except the Father, and who the Son chooses to reveal Him. So Jesus speaks of the universal inability for anybody to know Him unless He reveals Himself. Nobody knows the Father except the Son, and nobody knows the Son except the Father, and who the Son chooses to reveal him. If you consider when Jesus is speaking with Peter, and he said, Who do the people say that I am? And Peter said, Some say you're Elijah, some say you're one of the prophets from long ago. And Jesus says, Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, You are Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, Blessed are you, Simon, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. So when Peter came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It was because the Father had revealed that to him. Blessed are you, Simon, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. Did not reveal what? That he was Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the thing that saves us. When we come to know and believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, that saves us. Because what Jesus is saying to Peter is the reason why you have come and believe that I am. Christ, the Son of the living God, is because the Father has revealed that to you. And so when we consider that scripture, it says the spirit whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. The world has the inability to receive the spirit. It cannot receive the spirit because it neither sees him nor knows him. And to be able to know him, it comes by revelation. Nobody knows the Father except the Son, and nobody knows the Son except the Father and who the Son chooses to reveal him. So in the scripture, we see that God chooses to reveal himself to individuals so that they would be saved. And so God calls, he chooses people, he predestines people to salvation. You consider Second Thessalonians, brothers and sisters, we're always bound to give thanks to God for you. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth. That God chose people to be saved. From the very beginning, it says, from the beginning, God chose you to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. In other words, God chose you to believe in the truth and be saved. You see, Paul referenced from the beginning, from the beginning, God chose you to be saved. That would be the foundation of the world, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption according to the kind intention of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace. So by the praise of the glory of his grace and the kind intention of God's will, he chose people to salvation, he chose us. And it says he chose us before the foundation of the world from the very beginning. Brothers, we're always bound to give thanks to God for you. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth. From the very beginning, before the foundation of the world, God chose us to be saved. All these things are just ripple effects from the Old Testament and what Jesus said about people that come into salvation. Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go bear fruit and your fruit should remain. So Jesus says, you did not choose me, 
So when it comes to Jesus, we didn't choose him. Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I chose you and I appointed you that you should go bear fruit. Your fruit should remain. Jesus said, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. One of the reasons why the world hates us in part is because we're chosen out of the world. And when you tell people how you've been chosen out of the world, a lot of times they'll hate you even more. But that's just the case from Jesus' own mouth. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So when we see these things in the New Testament, they're just ripple effects from what Jesus Christ had already said, that we were chosen. Paul says we're chosen before the foundation of the world. And that we're chosen for salvation. And so when Paul is saying... Brothers and sisters, we always ought to give thanks to God for you from the beginning God chose you to be saved. What Paul is saying is we ought to thank God that you're believers because the reason why you're believers is God chose you to be saved. Brothers, we're always bound to give thanks to God for you because from the beginning God chose you to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. So we should thank God because you're believers. And the reason why you're believers is because God chose you to be saved. That's what the verse is saying. See, the Apostle Paul was consistent with Jesus' teachings about being chosen. If you remember, Paul said, I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, that they also may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, and with it the hope of eternal glory. So Paul is saying that he is enduring all things for the sake of those who are chosen, that they also may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus. So he's talking about a future people, a future chosen people that have not obtained salvation yet. So he's enduring all things, being thrown in prison, being flogged, being beaten, being attacked by wild animals. And he's saying, I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, that they also may obtain salvation, a future tense, and a future tense salvation, which is in Christ Jesus and with it the hope of eternal glory. So Paul's not saying that I endure all things for the sake of every single person on the planet that ever lived, ever is living now, and ever will be born. He's saying, I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, that they also may obtain salvation. He knows they were chosen before the foundation of the world, but through the preaching of the gospel, they will obtain salvation. That when God's chosen and elect hear the gospel, they will respond a certain way. They will hear a calling through the gospel. So he says in his letter, brothers and sisters, we know that God chose you because our gospel came not merely with words, but with power, deep conviction in the Holy Spirit. So he says, brothers and sisters, we know that God chose you. And then he gives the reason because our gospel came not merely with words, but with power, deep conviction in the Holy Spirit. Now remember, the scripture says the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. To us who are being saved, the message of the gospel is the power of God. The ones that God is saving, the one he's chosen before the foundation of the world, they will respond to the gospel in a certain way. It will have power to them. The gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So when Paul says, brothers, we know that God chose you because our gospel came not merely with words, but with power, deep conviction in the Holy Spirit. Those who God has chosen, the gospel comes with power, it comes with deep conviction, and the Holy Spirit is present. See, the Apostle Paul knew that he could preach the gospel to hundreds of people, but only those who are chosen will respond. And those are the ones he was enduring all things for. I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, that they also may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, and with it the hope of eternal glory. So he's preaching the gospel and enduring all things for the sake of those who are chosen, that they will obtain in a future tense salvation, which is in Christ Jesus. And he knows that through the preaching of the gospel, the chosen of God will respond in a certain way. Brothers, we know that God chose you because our gospel came not merely with words, but with power, deep conviction, and the Holy Spirit. So we see this ripple effect all the way from the words of Jesus and even from the Old Testament. We see it into the words of Jesus and into the New Testament that God is the one who chooses people for salvation. 
Brothers, consider your own calling. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. But God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And the debased and the despised things God has chosen. The things that are not to nullify the things that are. That no man may boast before God, but by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. So when it comes to us being in Christ Jesus, it's by his own doing. It's God's own doing. It's not our free will. If we are in Christ Jesus because we made the choice, then we're in there because of our own doing. But it says he made the choice. He chose some over others. He called some over others. Consider your own calling, brother, and not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty, according to the flesh, have been called. And then it goes on to talk about the people that God has chosen. And then it says that no man may boast before God by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus. So we can never boast because of free will decision that we're in Christ Jesus, only by God's doing, only by his choice, only by his calling. So very clearly the scripture teaches that God chooses people. He chooses people for salvation. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on hearts of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Once again, Paul has his theology right. He knows that God is the one that do, does the choosing. So many people think they have chosen God, and yet they need to be a corrected by the Apostle Paul and Jesus, where Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. To those who are chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on hearts of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And on a side note, when you're dealing with people who have faulty free will doctrines, you do have to put on a lot of patience. You do have to put on a lot of gentleness and compassion with them. They will keep insisting that you're not chosen of God and that they're the ones that chose God. And as you're arguing with them, as those chosen of God, remember to put on hearts of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. See, the free will doctrine leads to boasting before God because you're saying that by your own doing, when anyone could have collectively and equally have done what you have done, by your own doing, you're in Christ Jesus and you're denying the fact that he is the one that he's the one that calls and he's the one that chooses. Consider your own calling brethren. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, the debased, the despised things God has chosen. The things that are not to nullify the things that are that no man may boast before God by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. See, we shouldn't boast that by our own doing we're in Christ Jesus, but because God has called some over others, he's chosen some over others. That's why we're in him. Now, as I said, this biblical truth that God chooses people for salvation is all the way through the Bible, from the Old Testament and in the New Testament. If you consider King David when he says, blessed is the man whom you choose to cause to approach to you, that he may dwell in your holy temple and be satisfied in your courts. So David is saying, blessed is the man whom you choose to draw near to you that it's a blessing when God chooses a man to draw near to him. And remember, Jesus says, no man can come to me unless the Father sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day, the person that's drawn, like King David. It was God who drew King David to himself. King David recognized this, that it was God who does the choosing. Blessed is the man whom you choose to draw near to you, that he may be satisfied in your courts and dwell in your holy temple. To dwell in God's holy courts and in his temple. To be raised up at the last day is all by the choice of God, and it's by God's drawing. And according to Jesus, no man can come. That's a universal claim that not one singular person can come to him unless the Father sent me draws him and I will raise him up, the person that's drawn up at the last day. No man can come to me unless the Father sent me draws him and I'll raise him up at the last day. So don't let anyone rob you out of the blessing of being chosen. When you've been drawn to God, that's a sign that you've been chosen. Blessed is the man whom you choose to draw near to you, that he may be satisfied in your courts and dwell in your holy temple. So God chooses individuals to draw near to him. Blessed is the man whom you choose to draw near to you. 
So when Jesus says, no man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I'll raise him up at the last day, Jesus is speaking of the universal inability of a person to come to him unless there's a grace and an act of God by which he draws that person to himself and that person who he draws, he will raise up at the last day. No man can come to me unless the Father sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, according to Jesus and according to the Apostle Paul, because remember, Apostle Paul said we're chosen before the foundation of the world, that God had purposes of grace before the foundation of the world. Consider another verse where it says he saved us and called us with a holy calling, not because of our own works, but because of his own purposes of grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So before the world began, God had purposes of grace and he saved us and called us with a holy calling. Remember. The verse we went over in 1 Corinthians 126, that it's an individual effectual calling. Well, he saved us and called us with an individual effectual calling, not because of our own works, we are made holy, but because of purposes of grace, it says. He saved us and called us with a holy calling, not because of our own works. So we're not made holy because of our own works. It's because of purposes of, of the grace, which is through the cross. He reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. So purposes of grace through the cross, not according to our works, but purposes of grace, we are made holy. This was a plan of God before the world began. Just as Paul said, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, so God chose people before the foundation of the world to give to the Son. And Jesus says, all the Father gives to me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I will by no wise cast out. So Jesus says, all the Father gives to me will come to me. So before people even come to Jesus Christ, they've been given to him. They've been given to him before the foundation of the world because they've been chosen. And Jesus says, all the Father gives to me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I will by no wise cast out. So before people even come to Christ, they've been given to him. They've been given to him before the foundation of the world and through the course of time and through the pe preaching of the gospel, they come to him. And according to Jesus, they all come to him. All the Father gives to me will come to me. So another verse that we can consider about God choosing individuals for salvation and that it's a calling, we consider Romans chapter 9 where it says, Though the twins not yet being yet born, so this is before the foundation of the world, though the twins not yet being yet born, not having done any good or any evil, that God's purpose according to his choice would stand, not of works, but of him who calls. So we see it's not of works again, so it's not about our works by which we're saved, but it's also about him who calls. And you can see this reference before these two individuals were even born before the foundation of the world. So that before these two individuals were even born, God chose one. So it's according to God's choice, according to his purpose. So it's not of works, but of him who calls. And that calling is an individual effectual calling. First Corinthians 1 26 again, consider your own calling. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. But God has chosen, God has chosen, God has chosen, it says and that by his own doing we are in Christ Jesus. It's funny how in that passage in 1 Corinthians 1.26 and onward, it says that we've been chosen three times. It's like the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and the Son all together saying, God has chosen, God has chosen, God has chosen, trying to nail it home so people can finally get it. It's almost as though it wasn't enough for people that Jesus already said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. But now the Trinity has to get involved and, and repeat over and over, God has chosen, God has chosen, God has chosen. But it is ultimately an act of grace that we come to understand these things, that we come to understand God's sovereign grace in our life, that he chose us to be saved, and that we can thank God that he chose us to be saved. And when we see our brothers and sisters, we can thank God that he chose them to be saved. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you from the beginning God chose you to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. So I thank you, brothers and sisters, that you came here and listened to this. But I thank God, more importantly, I thank God that he chose you, that 
The reason why you believe the truth is because God, we're always bound to thank God for you. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth. That God chose you to believe in the truth. And God chose you to be saved. And that's the only reason why you're even here and interested in this stuff. Otherwise, you wouldn't be because the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, and neither can they know them because they're spiritually discerned. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, their foolishness unto him, and says, Neither can they know them. They have the inability to know the things of the Spirit because they do not have the Spirit. And that's how I started this, where Jesus said, The Spirit whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. The world cannot receive the Spirit. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. So the only way that a person can come to receive the spirit is if they come to know him. And the only way we come to know him is if Jesus chooses to reveal himself. Nobody knows the father except the son and nobody knows the son except the father and who the son chooses to reveal him. All an act of grace that we can thank God for completely in our lives. So God bless you. Peace to you. Take care. And I hope your night or day is going good. Yeah.